Welcome to the third part of the video, Measurement of Error in Forecasting. In parts 1 and 2, we have seen terms like forecast error, running sum of forecast errors, also known as R S F E mean squared error also known as M S E standard deviation and mean absolute deviation also known as MAD. Now in this video we will look at another term called mean absolute percent error mean absolute percent error this is also known as m a p e mean absolute percent error sometimes this is also known as mean absolute percent deviation so let's see how to find out the mean absolute percent error so m a p e is equal to now we'll derive the formula based on this name so mean absolute percent error let's start from the end so first error so error as we have seen in forecast error is the difference between the actual demand for a certain time period and the forecast for that time period so error is a t where t is the time period minus f t a stands for actual demand and f stands for forecast now next is percent so percent error now percent is always calculated based on a base data for example let's say you have eight subjects and each of them have 100 marks for examination so 800 is the total marks that you can score and let's say if you score 650 so the percent will be 650 divided by 800 multiplied by 100 so this has to come in the denominator now we are comparing the error to the actual forecast so in the denominator we will put the actual forecast for time period so this is the percent error without that 100 so we will add the 100 but let's understand this first so so actual demand for time period t minus the forecast for time period t divided by the actual demand for time period t now for percent we have to multiply this by 100 now we have to take the absolute value of the percent error now absolute value means that whatever is the sign of the output whether it is minus x or minus y we convert into x or y so here the actual is going to be positive 100 is positive but the actual minus forecast may be positive or negative so here we'll take the absolute value of the error so this becomes absolute percent error now again if we have multiple time periods for which we are calculating this 
we have to take the sum of all those time periods. Let's assume that we have n number of time periods. So t is equal to 1 to n. Now we have to take the mean of the absolute percent error. Now if we have n number of time periods, so we have to divide this by n. So this becomes the mean absolute percent error. Now let's understand this better by looking at an example. Now this is the example that we had used for our part 1 and part 2 videos. So we'll continue on the same data. So we have 8 months of data. So n is 8. We had the actual demand for each period. We had the forecast for each period. Then we calculated the forecast error or deviation. We calculated the running sum of forecast error. Then we calculated the square value of forecast error and the absolute value of the forecast error. Now, to find out MAPE, let's note down the formula. So, sigma t is equal to 1 to n AT minus FT divided by AT multiplied by 100 divided by n. Now from the previous example we already have the absolute value of the error which is AT minus FT. So next let's find out AT minus FT the absolute value divided by AT into 100. So I have made this new column absolute value of the forecast error divided by the absolute value multiplied by 100. So the first month 80 minus FT is 25 AT is 200 so our calculation becomes 25 divided by 200 multiplied by 100 so these two zeros get cancelled and this is 12.5 percent. So this becomes 12.5. Next, 20 divided by 240 into 200. So 20 divided by 240 into 100. 0, 0 to 12. And 100 divided by 12 is 8.3. So this becomes 8.3%. Next is 15 divided by 300 multiplied by 100, which is 5%. Next is 20 divided by 270 in 200, which is 7.4. Next is 20 divided by 230 in 200. This is 8.7. Next, 20 divided by 260 into 100. This is 7.7. .7. Then 40 divided by 210 into 100. This is 19 percent. Next is 35 divided by 275 into 100. This is 12.7 percent. So we have calculated this part for each time period. Now we have to take a sum of all of these. So we have to add all of these. So this comes out to be 81.3%. And next we have to take the average or the mean. So 81.3 divided by 8 because n is 8. So 81.3 divide by 8 so this is 10.16 and this is of course in percent so what this indicates is that on average the forecast error 
was about 10% of the actual demand. 